Hi, I'm Zach with uh, HKN, and we are going to make a series about uh, Maxwell's equations. Um, they are some of the, the really most fundamental equations in electrical engineering, um, and they're a little bit difficult. Some of them are a little bit difficult to understand, so um, we're going to try to bring some clarity to them. So um, there's four of them, so we're going to make four different videos, but this is the first one. It's called Gauss's Law. And um, its most simple um, form is its derivative form. Um, what this, this equation right here says is that the divergence of a three-dimensional um, electric vector field is equal to the charge density divided by this constant called the permittivity of free space. Um, now, in multivariable calculus, you'll have learned that the divergence operator um, <coughs> results in a scalar value, and it kind of tells us at a, at a, at a particular point in space how the, the vector field um, tends to move away or into that space. Um, you could kind of visualize it as in, at a point in space, what's the behavior of the vector field as far as moving in or out of that? that one point. So this is the the most the smallest form of this equation, but if we do some integration, we can get a form that's a little more um, it's a little more easy to understand what exactly it's saying. So what do we have here? We have a um, this row is a volume charge density. It tells us charge per unit volume. So let's integrate over a volume, three dimensional volume. What that results in So when we integrate both sides of this equation over volume, we get that the surface integral over a closed shape of the electric field the dot product of the electric field with the di a differential area. That is this side of this equation integrated over volume. And we'll have, so we have a charge volume density, right? And that will become integrated over volume, Q. And the constant stays there. Now that little Q enclosed is the, the, the total charge enclosed by this um, closed surface, right? So, this this form of this equa uh, this equation it's really the same equation but this one's a little more um, we can draw some pictures and kind of understand a little bit more what it means so what this is saying is that if we have some arbitrary shape this is this is a three dimensional closed surface the Actually, let's let's do this for a minute. So, what it what what exactly does this part of this mean? A differential area, an infinitesimally small area, is defined by in a, in vector notation as a a vector perpendicular to that differential area. So it'd be defined like that. This would be the vector dA. So when we take the dot product of E and dA, let's say E looks like that in that particular spot on the surface. We're taking the, we know the dot product of two vectors kind of tells us how parallel those two vectors are. So we're, this is asking really how perpendicular to our surface is the, is the electric field. So we're, so when we integrate over the entire surface, we get what's called, both of these, we get what's called the electric flux. And that's how much of the electric field is moving out of this surface. So we would have, say, we drew our little differential area right there, have an electric field moving out. 
Um, and we did, we took all these little differential areas, dotted them with the electric field, and then summed them all up. That's what that integration is. So that gives us a little bit of intuition about what this is saying. So we added up all the parts of the electric field perpendicular to the surface. And, and really, that's, that's all there is to it. But we'll do an example to show, um, show some mathematical concept here. So this is called, this is the integral form of Gauss's law. So let's try to think of a situation where our electric field, which radiates straight out from our charge, would be perfectly perpendicular to the surface at every point. So we can, we can make any surface. See, this is an arbitrary surface. So let's try to imagine a surface where the electric field would be perpendicular to it at every point on the surface. What would that be? That would be a sphere, right? If we put a, a point charge centered in a sphere, and I'm not the best at drawing spheres, but you know. So, and this sphere, say, has radius r. And let's just imagine that that's at the center. So, with this, the electric field lines moving out from this charge, they'll intersect the surface of this sphere perpendicularly everywhere, right? So, this. This becomes, this dot product is always just E multiplied with dA everywhere. This becomes E times A, right? And what does Gauss's law say? Um, for any arbitrary surface, this integral is equal to the Q enclosed by the surface over this um, epsilon naught. Now this, this little pink dot here is a point charge Q, right? So we set this equal to our point charge Q, which is the only charge enclosed by the sphere over epsilon naught. And um, so we know from geometry, the, the surface area of a sphere, what is the surface area of a sphere? It's A equals four pi R squared. So we can sub that in here. What do we get when we do that? We get that E times four pi R squared is equal to our point charge Q over epsilon naught. And let's, this is still, ve this is still a vector. Let's, um, let's divide by four pi R squared. We'll get that E is equal to Q over four pi epsilon naught R squared. And um, now four and pi and epsilon naught are all constants. So we'll pull one over four pi epsilon naught out. And um, I don't know, you'll see uh, different books, we'll call it different things, but um, I think a lot of times it's called K is equal, um, yeah. K times Q over R squared. And that, you'll find this equation in your physics book maybe for the electric field at distance R due to a point charge Q, right? So, and that's really how it's derived. It's derived using Gauss's law. And there's other derivations we can make with um, infinite lines of charge, infinite sheets of charge, but it, they all really come from this fundamental law right here, so. So that's the first law. Next week, we'll, we'll make a video about Gauss's law for magnetic fields. All right, thank you very much.